Welcome back to Mystic Challenge. And just before we meet our next mystery guest, let me tell you that our second pair of Mystic Masters are Medium, Ronnie Buckingham, and Tarot Card Reader in Baal. Now, at the moment, they can't hear anything, and as the door shut gently but firmly on our Mystic booth, they now can't see anything either, so it's perfectly safe to say hello to the man who could have turned up on your doorstep at any time, and now he could help you find a fortune. It's the wonderful Richard Alfords. Mr. Ross, uh, how's it going, mate? I'm fine. Thanks for taking a seat. Very good, thank you. So, um, let's start with when you were growing up. Okay. Did you have brothers, sisters, and were you a happy kid? Uh, I was a very happy child. Um, nothing to report childhood wise. Uh, very stable family and had three younger brothers. Um, I think they had me and then wanted to have a girl after that and had <laughs> another three attempts doing it. I know that they had fun practising and then they gave yes, up after absolutely. four. They used to put me in skirts and stuff like that, which um, I'm still telling psychiatrists about even today. Really? Well, I have <laughs> seen you once or twice dressed as a woman and you always seem to pick the same name. Yeah, that was off camera though, wasn't it, Paul? <laughs> <laughs> what do you do at the weekends as you open? Yeah, no, uh, yeah, I always call myself Barbara if I'm doing a sort of comedy female part, which I've done once or twice in the past. Right. So, yeah. Talking of females, uh, are you in a relationship at the moment? Yes, I have been for the last uh, seven or eight years now um, with uh, Sarah, who uh, I met in pantomime, uh, bizarrely, um, a few years back. And it was a Jack and the Beanstalk and I was Simple Simon and she was the princess. So it was a fairy tale <laughs> romance. And have you got plans to marry? You said a date? Um, we, well, we've, we're engaged. Um, we're kind of very lazy about it. We got engaged a couple of years back, and uh, the only reason we haven't got married yet is because we can't be bothered to organise the actual day because it's too expensive and too much of a hassle. Now, how did you get into TV presenting? Right, well, that happened completely by chance. Um, I was walking past a news agent um, when I was at college studying to be a journalist. I wanted to get into TV, but that was my roundabout way of getting into it. Um, I walked past the news agents on the way into the college, stopped in my tracks, thought, I'd better go back in and buy the paper because I need to check for vacancies in the business, in, in newspapers. Walked in, bought the uh, Guardian, opened it up, and lo and behold, there's a little advert in the corner saying, if you want to be a TV presenter, write off to this address, which I did, and uh, went through all this auditioning process and um, got the job uh, for Disney. Um, doing um, a children's TV programme. Of course, with Jenny Powell. That's right, yes. And then you're yes. on The Big Breakfast and lots of other shows, yep. Cyber Cafe and stuff, and yep. now working with Carol Vorderman. That's right, Miss Vorderman. Finding yes. people's money. On there. Now, you mentioned you made it to college. Does that mean you were very good at school, or were you a bit lazy? I was good at, at school um, up until I was 16, and then it all kind of fell by the wayside when I discovered DJing um, in sixth form, and I got really bored of it all. Um, and, you know, you don't wear school uniform in sixth form, and, and, and everything just goes a bit slack, and I lost interest. But now, I'm sort of trying to regain my lost education. I've signed up to do a, uh, an open university course next year, and I kind of and I want and I'm reading books all the time for pleasure. Can you believe it? Um, and I used to obviously just run a mile from them at school. And what uh, open university degree do you want to do? Uh, English literature. But I'm keeping my options open. It might change the history. And what kind of books are you reading? You read novels, or is it history, or what? Novels, uh, but mo mainly history books at the moment. That's what I, that's my big thing at the moment. I'm very much into the Second World War and uh, the 20th century sort of modern history. That's my thing. So, if you're keen on literature, would you want to be a writer ever? Because you were doing journalism at yeah, college. Yeah, the, the, the thing I've got on the go at the moment uh, is it's more of a hobby more than anything. Because I don't want to fall flat on my face with it. But I, I have started writing a novel uh, in the la at the beginning of this year, and I'm about two or three chapters into it because I didn't realise how much work it takes. But it's really hard going. Um, but who knows, in a few years' time, maybe I'll start hawking it around to who's interested in it. Hey, well, everything else you've done has been a success. Yep. And now we're going to ask you to go back behind our screen to okay, the round of applause. Sir. Richard Alford, All right, ladies. Thanks, mate. And now it's time for our Mystic Masters to take up that challenge. Let's see who will get most of our mystery guests' life story right. And first up, it's medium Ronnie Buckingham. Earlier today, Ronnie spent just 20 minutes holding the hand of our mystery guest, who is in a heavy disguise, but he has not spoken to that guest. Please welcome Ronnie Buckingham. <laughs> welcome, Ronnie. Take a seat, mate. We're going to give you 90 seconds to give us a bit of a pricey of our mystery guest's life and career. What areas do you want to focus on, Ronnie? Uh, childhood, career and relationships, please. Childhood, career and relationships. Yes, in one and a half minutes, off you go. OK, childhood. I feel he had to prove something to his father, something he had to do to get his father's approval. Uh, he was very determined from a very young age. I feel this person has brothers, two brothers possibly, and a very strong link with his mother. Barbara is an important name, as are Jack and Jane with this person. November is also a very special month for this person, round about the 13th to the 15th. I feel there's false connections going back, possibly a link with someone in his family with the RAF. Uh, he could have started to learn to play guitar, and I feel that there's strong Catholic links within this family. Career. 
a big change of direction for this person four or five years ago. I really do feel that he's a reformed character that maybe had to get over some hurdles, like maybe a drinking problem or something like that. He seems to report on things. Relics and antiquities would be quite important. Lots and lots of travel with this person. Australia, Scandinavia, desert areas. He keeps himself very fit and enjoys many outdoor pursuits. Golf, possible martial arts, uh, that type of thing. Lived in the country for quite a while. A knowledge of plants and a love for animals. Uh, other sporting interests in include swimming. Um, I feel there's been possibly an injury and that would be around the knee area. Has taken risks in his career and life and they've put him in quite a bit of jeopardy. And I feel that he may have been at one time something to do with pantomime. Relationships. There is a lady in his life, a girlfriend, possibly engaged, and she's the one that pushes him along. I feel there could be red or auburn hair there. There has been a breakup in his past with another relationship, and there's possibly a child, a boy maybe from that. He's very capable of mood swings, but can be quite hard and very soft, crumble as well. And we need to stop it there, Ronnie. I've got to be hard. You've had slightly more than 90 seconds, but well done. <laughs> and next we're joined by Ronnie's opponent, tarot card reader in Baal. Now, the only information in Baal had to work with was a set of cards chosen earlier by our guest who was in a heavy disguise. She has not spoken to that guest. Please welcome... In Baal. In Baal. Take a seat then. You two are going to get 90 seconds to give us as much information as you can. Which areas do you want to aim for? I'm going to talk about his career, relationships and health. Career, relationships and health in 90 right. seconds. Your time starts now. Thank you very much. Um, I saw him as somebody that helps people repair their lives, maybe a psychologist or a doctor, but I also saw strength and the ability to teach, so I sort of thought between that and a boxing instructor. His greatest ambition in life is to go and lie under a tree or lie in the desert and just sleep. He's very active, so he just wants some rest sometimes. He's currently learning or teaching something, maybe taking a course. His career has to do with children, it has to do um, with travel, he has to travel on his job. And what spurs him on in making money is worrying about financial failure. Maybe he's not from a very privileged background and he always wants to make more in case he ever lost it all. He's in a good relationship at the moment. He's married or as good as. It's a very committed relationship. And his partner is the sort of person that wants to look good all the time. She'll even wear lipstick if she has to cook. Um, it might be a mixed race relationship. He's either expecting a child or has just had one. There's two things that linked with that person, the letter V and the star sign Taurus. That might be a parent or a sibling. And a lot of sexual cards came up in a spread that A means he's very passionate about everything. And also it shows that they do think about it every five minutes. Health-wise, he's a non-smoker. He might suffer from stress headaches and he might suffer from occasional lower back pain. You've got five seconds left. Anything else? I'll just smile. OK, I think <laughs> you should, because our guest has been lurking behind the wings there. Thank you, Inbalo, for the moment. Thank you. He's been around there for almost five minutes, so we now know, according to Inbal, what's been on his mind. It's the moment of truth. Well, our mystics welcome, please, television presenter Richard Orford. <laughs> 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 Take a seat, mate. Hello. <laughs> OK, I've got to start with that. Every five minutes, Richard? No, not true at all. Every minute, actually. <laughs> I was fantasising all the way back there, but... Uh, OK, yeah. now, they both hit it, I think, on the head as far as the relationship goes. Yep. Engaged or as good as married. Yes. But you haven't got children yet, which they both... Do you no, want children? Yes, so very much so, yeah. And we are sort of coming around to sort of trying... We're, very, we're trying very half-heartedly at the moment. It would be the immaculate <laughs> conception if it happened. Because <laughs> we're both very busy. But, uh, yeah, no, it would be nice in the next couple of years. OK, now, the name Barbara came up from Ronnie, and we learnt that yes. when you're in drag for comedy purposes on the telly, you call yourself Barbara. Which is really bizarre, <laughs> yes. I OK, now, the, word, the name's Jack and Jane. Any, any calls there? Jane is the middle name of my fiancé, and Jack is the lead character in this novel I'm writing. So I've been very much, and I've been working on that a lot over the last few weeks. So that's that's quite interesting. And you yeah. met your girlfriend in pantomime. What was the name of the panto? Jack and the Beanstalk. So Jack oh, there again. Really yes. Oh, thank a you. forces yeah. connection. I don't know if there is one in your family, but you're interested in the moment about in World War Two. Yes. Yeah. Um, the the RAF and the 1940s thing. The last book I've just put down yesterday was about the Battle of Britain and, uh, and 1940s oh. aeroplanes. So th there you go. Oh, wow. yeah. Okay. Now, uh, was there a change of direction four or five years ago? Was that when you picked up that fateful newspaper? Yes, that was. Well, it was more like about six or seven years ago. But yes, it was when I picked up that newspaper, and the, and the, the same year I met uh, Sarah as well. So I'm sure you weren't overdoing the booze then. As well no, as no, 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 not at all. No, I'm not. I'm not a reformed alcoholic. Because <laughs> in fact, I know to point out. you do keep yourself very fit. 
of course. And you have taken risks, I think, on things like the big breakfast and this yes, club definitely. And stuff. I have taken risks, and I've been in some dangerous situations on that as well. And also, uh, Ronnie picked up on the fact you're a reporter. You were training as a reporter. Yes, when correct. You yes, first and telly. report on television as well, I guess. And yeah. of course, relics and antiques. When you're finding fortunes for people. Yes, of course. Yeah, deal with them all the time. Yeah, a lot of that. And so that's not the presenters. That's the actual. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> a number of strikes there. And again with Imbal. Now we know you're not a doctor. No. And you're certainly nothing to do with boxing, as far as I know. No, are not you? that I'm aware of. No. no. But have you ever lost money? You worried about losing money? Yeah, I did sort of have a bit of a, a punt on the stock market a while back, and uh, it all went a bit. Pear shaped, so I lost a bit of money on that, but nothing too hideous. But it was a bit of a got my fingers burnt. Now, Imbal picked up on the fact, and you talked about you doing your open university degree, which yep. you're currently learning, you're reading a lot, you're researching, yeah, which is very good. Yes, that's right. In yep. the past, of course, you worked with children, yes, I have on children's TV, and yeah, children all the time, really. They and you, you've travelled a lot because you've been to Disneyland Paris how many times? 14 times now, <laughs> and believe me, the novelty wears off after the first time. <laughs> okay, and as we know, you are very, very, very. Very passionate. Yes, it would seem so, wouldn't it? <laughs> That's one of the facts I'm quite pleased about uh, See, promoting Imbal, on this show. If he had yeah. a vote, Richard would vote for Imbal for that one, wouldn't it? Like a PR <laughs> yes, agent. Very much so. OK, now, how about the letter... Sorry, I'm just thinking about sex then. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll get my attention back again. How about yeah. the letter V? The letter V? I can't think of anything in particular that would... Uh, that would Apart from up. your co-host on Find a Fortune? Uh, Carol Vorderman, yes. So there might be something yeah. there. Carol yeah. might be pleased if she's watching, won't she? Yeah, she's special in my life, is she? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> and are you somebody who dreams of like lying under a tree and just relaxing and... Well, when I go on holiday, I tend to be the sort that wants to relax on the beach as opposed to doing the big sightseeing thing. So, yeah, that's... Yeah, and I, I, am, I am very lazy, really. I do sit around and you know, do nothing. And how about on the health side? Any stress headaches ever? ever? Occasionally I get stressful headaches, but I think you said about being a non-smoker, and I, 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 I'm struggling with that. <laughs> well, good luck with I'm that. I'm a bit of a smoker, yeah. Good luck with that. Yeah. And well done to Imbal and Ronnie. OK. And it's decision time for Sue and the jury. What do you reckon, Sue? Well, I think if we were to believe Richard, then Imbal was spot on with the passion. And um, not so good on the non-smoking. <laughs> but very, very, very correct about the uh, Open University course, which was, was great. Um, but Ronnie really got it right with the changing jobs and the change of career at that certain time. And the taking risks, which Richard did on, on the big breakfast. And, um, and the relics and antiques, although I don't think that's a very nice way to speak about my friend, Carol Vorderman. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> well, there'll be trouble after the show. <laughs> so that means it's commiserating. To Imbal, but well done to Ronnie. And huge thanks and best wishes for the future. Richard Orford, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks to our two earlier mystics, and of course to Irma Kurtz. Thanks to you for watching. This is Mystic Challenge. We'll see you the next time. Until then, enjoy yourselves. Bye for now. Unlucky.